Mm, nah. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. That's right, we are back with Annie, are you okay? And uh, her blade is now lower than ever because it does actually touch the ground at the front, which is interesting. Uh, I think because now that we've countersunk these bolts, uh, we actually don't have the issue of running on those bolts anymore, which was actually squaring up the front end. And realistically, it's these standoffs that are just a little bit too short. Uh, speaking of, yeah, we've got cutting to do for the rest of the chassis. Uh, so let's get going on that. So here's all the parts off the CNC machine and we've just done uh, one-sided operations on all of these. So like this part, for example, is the solid uh, weapon mount, which feels really good actually. Uh, but you can see it doesn't have the bolt holes that are over here required to mount the front armor. So we're gonna need to drill those at some point. Uh, we also need to drill the mounting holes for the side armor because there are bolts that go in through the sides here into this piece. Uh, and hold everything together. So all of that needs to be done on here. Uh, now, the last version of Annie, we moved on from this point and dyed all of these pieces. And as much as I really want Annie in a color, uh, dyeing those pieces worked okay, but not great, especially for this type of construction because dyeing them tended to warp bits, especially in this case, it's gonna warp stuff like this, which is fairly thin uh, and a long way from the rest of the mass. So I don't wanna do that. Instead, I've got a different idea for coloring them, which uh, involves a bit of fire. I really hope that the change that happens in the HTPE surface comes through in that video because uh, in real life you can see kind of a glimmer disappear or like a sheen disappear on the side of the HTP that you hit with a propane torch. Uh, I've tried this with like little gas match butane lighter things and it just does not have the same effect at all. You really do need a propane torch or something similar to do this. So this here is a test piece that I made uh, a little while ago or a couple of days ago, I should say. And one half was hit with the propane torch and the other half was not and was just hit with the spray can as I was uh, spraying the whole piece. And you can see that on this side, if I scratch, I get a nice big old scratch in the paint. And on this side, doesn't matter how hard I scratch, I can't actually get a chip like that in the paint. You can get little chips and little marks, but they don't actually go that deep. And you certainly don't get this type of thing here where the paint just all flakes off in one big line. You just can't do it on that side. So yeah, it seems that, that uh, flame treating the piece works really, really well. Uh, and this is what I was talking about with uh, testing it with a butane torch. Uh, sorry, with a butane gas match. Uh, one side of this was done with a gas match and the other side was done without. And yeah, there is no difference here at all in the scratchability of these. Both of these are just terrible. 
so yeah, this is hopefully how we're gonna paint HDPE from this point on, because minimal warpage, fingers crossed. Uh, so while all that stuff is drying, we need to move on to the next thing that I have to work on, which is going to be quite the challenge, and that is this piece here. Now, this piece here is a angle that mounts up Annie's new drive motors, which are the BBB motors, these ones here, and they have an interesting keying shape on the front of them. They snap into, or can snap into a certain shape. It's essentially a double flat on a 13 mil round here, which means that you need a shape like this to actually key them into. However, I can't make that shape uh, on a CNC machine because it basically needs to be ultra precise. I can't drill these holes in that. And yeah, it's just, it's very, very messy and a lot more complicated of a CNC job than I've ever done before. So instead we're gonna try and bash this out by hand. Uh, now I can of course just ignore the flats and drill a 13 mil circle and that would work totally fine, other than the fact that all of the torque of this motor that is driving Annie around would then go through four M2 screws, which isn't really a lot, and I would prefer these flats in play to actually soak up some of that torque. Uh, so what I'm gonna try and do is I've got this basically leftover extra piece here, and I really just want to try and rough a flat like that in. I can get a 12 mil hole in here really easily because it's 12 mil gap between the two flats, and then it should just be a case of sanding out or like hand filing out an extra kind of half mil in each direction on the 45. Although I have literally no idea how well this is gonna go. Right, so this is a mess. Basically, a bunch of things have happened since the last time uh, I was on camera. I did try out the setup that I was trying for the motors and realized that trying to file these in any kind of precise way was just not gonna be a thing. Uh, so I went ahead and just cut the two mounting plates we need uh, and filed them large enough that there's enough play in them that I can just bolt the motors in where they need to go. Uh, painted all the parts, uh, I'm <laughs> running out of time right now uh, to film and also build Annie and get everything done for this event. So I kind of just need to go ahead and just start building now. Uh, so that is the next trick. Let's get on with that.
and she's done <laughs> and she looks really good in this color scheme I really really like this uh, the paint system hasn't worked as well as I thought it was going to oh, not on all pieces at any rate like the top cover I'm getting flaking off of and stuff which is unfortunate but that is all the time I've got I've literally got an hour to pack my bag and get to the event uh, so we are going to go ahead and do that hopefully a uh, new Annie works pretty well I haven't really had a chance to do any real testing or anything obviously uh, so we're gonna test in the arena for the first time because of course that's a great way to do this um, yeah, I'm really happy with how she's looking and how she's feeling though. The blade is really low to the ground. Everything seems to move really nicely. I think we're good to go. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this slightly more rushed, slightly more manic video. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>